All right, here we are in section 6.4. Um, this section is all about the endomembrane system. And so you may have heard of the endoplasmic reticulum. I've mentioned it a few times, but I've never talked about it as the endomembrane system. And essentially, this is a term that describes um, a number of organelles that work together to regulate uh, protein movement, uh, so synthesis of proteins, as well as how those proteins are moved around in the cell as well as outside of the cell. And they also perform a lot of other important metabolic functions in the cell, including um, detoxification, uh, storage of calcium ions, um, lipid synthesis, some polysaccharide synthesis. There's a variety of functions. Um, so the structures that are involved in this endomembrane system include the nuclear envelope, so the membrane that is around the nucleus, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum, both the smooth and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, they include the Golgi apparatus and lysosomes, vacuoles, and of course the plasma membrane, which is the membrane around um, the cell. And so here you have a, well here you have a photograph of the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The ER stands for endoplasmic reticulum, just in case you missed that. And in this diagram, you can see the nuclear envelope, which is actually connected to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And then you have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum over here. Um, and you would have the Golgi apparatus nearby here, uh, but it's not shown in this diagram, but that is part of the endomembrane system. And you would have lysosomes. And here, of course, you have um, a vesicle that's moving away from the endoplasmic reticulum. So let's talk about the endoplasmic reticulum. So the endoplasmic reticulum has many functions uh, and it's kind of, I've always had a hard time remembering all the things that it does because there's so many different things that it does, but like the main thing about the endoplasmic reticulum is protein synthesis um, because the rough endoplasmic reticulum um, is called rough endoplasmic reticulum because it has a bunch of uh, ribosomes that are attached to its surface. And those ribosomes, as we know, are involved in protein synthesis. Blah, blah, blah. synthesis. So if you don't remember anything else, then remember protein synthesis. Like, you, you, you know, that's at least something. Um, but then there's a lot of other stuff. <clears throat> so the two types of endoplasmic reticula are the smooth and the rough. And the smooth is involved in all kinds of stuff, um, that, which includes uh, synthesis of lipids, uh, which, which uh, also is part of uh, synthesizing sex hormones, uh, because those are made out of steroids, which are lipids. Um, it breaks down some complex carbohydrates. Uh, it's important for detoxifying uh, the cell if there's any poison, such as um, alcohol, uh, barbiturates, and it also uh, stores calcium, uh, calcium ions, which are important for muscle contraction. So when your muscles contract, um, calcium ions need to be released into the cell, uh, cytosol, and when there, it's not uh, being released, it's stored inside of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So those are the three kind of major functions of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and so making certain lipids, especially detoxifying from any poisons, and storing calcium as well as breaking down some carbohydrates. Uh, what I do want to mention and was talked about a little bit in the reading was this idea of the uh, building up a tolerance for certain drugs or certain substances. And what we find, so in liver cells, there's a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum to help metabolize alcohol, which is a poison for your cells. Um, and when someone builds up tolerance towards alcohol, part of that is building up, making, having more smooth endoplasmic reticulum to help get rid of that poison so that like the cell isn't as damaged by it. And uh, there's all sorts of problems affiliated with that because when there's more smooth endoplasmic reticulum or reticula, um, the cell is also then less sensitive to other uh, substances that might be considered a poison, but also can be used uh, to help the cell, like antibiotics or other pharmaceutical drugs. Um, so uh, it's, you know, in general, it's not good when... Um, these, when your cells are doused in poisons all the time, 
uh, because they adjust their machinery, which can have an adverse effect on you in the future. Uh, so that's a smooth endoplasmic reticulum kind of in a nutshell. Um, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, like I said, it has the ribosomes on the surface, and those ribosomes make proteins, and we sometimes call those proteins glycoproteins because there's proteins and they have a carbohydrate um, that is attached to it. So when you have a, a carbohydrate attached to the protein, we call it a glycoprotein. And um, those glycoproteins are important because they give information about where the protein needs to go afterwards. Um, because proteins that are made in the rough endoplasmic reticulum generally are proteins that are made to be uh, secreted or to be taken somewhere else. Whereas the proteins that are made by the ribosomes that are just floating around in the cytosol oftentimes are used by the cell itself. Yeah. Um, the other thing that both the smooth and the rough endoplasmic reticulum in, are involved in is in uh, phospholipid uh, synthesis. So that's um, important for making the membrane. And <clears throat> both the smooth uh, or membrane molecules, I guess we could say, both the smooth and the rough endoplasmic reticulum will make uh, parts of this phospho, uh, these phospholipids, but this rough endoplasmic reticulum makes the proteins that become part of the membrane as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. Next, we have the Golgi apparatus, right? So we said that part of the endomembrane system is the endoplasmic reticulum, the nuclear envelope, also the Golgi apparatus. So the Golgi apparatus, so if the endoplasmic reticulum is sort of like this like uh, factory, biosynthetic factory in the cell. Um, the Golgi apparatus is sort of like the shipping as well as the receiving center of the cell. So it's, it, it takes things in from the endoplasmic reticulum and it will send them off to where they need to go. <clears throat> so the Golgi apparatus is this flattened membrane system just like the endoplasmic, um, uh, endoplasmic reticulum and it has these sacs that are called cisternae, cisternae, I never remember how to say that, weird word. Um, and the, the Golgi apparatus will receive the, the materials from the endoplasmic reticulum, the endoplasmic reticulum, um, such as the proteins, and it will modify them. So it might like take off the glycoproteins that are there, change them for something else, or add a phosphate to it to like give it an indication where it needs to go, right? So it has the different things that it will do to modify whatever the products are. Um, and based on that, it sort of sorts and it packages. It kind of like, you know, will take the materials, put the, uh, maybe change the chemical uh, or the molecules that are attached to it so that when it goes off somewhere else, it knows where it's supposed to go. You might think about it like putting an address or a zip code on a package. And so the, the Golgi apparatus has kind of like two sides to it. It has like a cis side. Um, which is the receiving side. That's where things will come in from the endoplasmic reticulum. And they'll kind of like pass through here in a various kind of uh, levels of the membrane. And then it has a trans side, which is a side that's usually closer to the membrane, to the edge of the cell. And that's like the shipping side, right? So that's where like the materials have already been sorted and modified and now they're moving out and they're probably going to go outside of the cell to some other place. Um, and yeah, materials can go the other direction as well, but generally it has this kind of cis to trans um, directionality of the materials if they're leaving the cell. Uh, the Golgi apparatus also makes some macromolecules, some polysaccharides. So you might want to know that as well. And this Golgi apparatus is a very dynamic organelle. It's constantly moving. It's, um, it's changing shape and size depending on the materials that are passing through it. And I think that's all that I want to say about the Golgi apparatus. Yes. Uh, so then we have the lysosomes. These are also part of the endomembrane system. And lysosomes are these really interesting organelles that are important for digestion of materials, um, including the cell itself, right? So they, they have enzymes in them that we call the hydrolytic enzymes that digest macromolecules, right? These enzymes can break down proteins, fats, polysaccharides, nucleic acids, what have you. And sometimes they're going to break down material that is, is uh, part of the cell, right? So they might take the cell's um, proteins 
and break them down into the amino acids to recycle them to be used to make something different, right? So it's almost like a, a disposal slash recycling system for the cell, um, which is great because then the cell doesn't need to take in new material or make new material, just like when you recycle something, it's um, more efficient. Well, depending on your recycling systems, but it should be. Uh, the lysosomes will also digest any materials that are taken in from the outside, right? So when a cell... Um, it takes in some some sort of materials from the outside world. Um, it will kind of like do this like um, engulfing like process, right? Uh, wow, that's a, not a great diagram, but you know it kind of will wrap around and then like take inside of the cell uh, the materials, and that process is called phagocytosis. And uh, so if there's any materials in there that the cell needs to digest, let's say some lipids or some um, some uh, carbohydrates, then the lysosomes are the organelles that have the enzymes to break that material down, right? So here, let's see, where do we have it? So here's a diagram of phagocytosis, right? So you have some kind of material that comes into the cell, and then the lysosome will bind to that vacuole, or to that vesicle, or vacuole, vacuole. Um, and there will be enzymes in there to digest it, and then it can, those materials can be used by the cell afterwards. Um, the other thing that lysosomes can do is uh, sometimes cells will just break down. They, they have something called apoptosis. Apoptosis. Wow, that's terrible. Let me try that again. Apoptosis, also known as programmed... Wow, I am just struggling here. Come on. Programmed cell death, um, which, uh, or like cell suicide. Um, and when the cell knows that it, it's not functioning, it may be um, there's something wrong with the cell, then it will go through a cascade of... Um, processes that eventually end up with the cell destroying itself. And in order to do that, it needs to use the enzymes that are inside of the lysosome. So they can do that as well. So that's lysosomes. And last thing are vacuoles. So vacuoles are just any material that's stored in like a compartment. You know, the cell needs to comp compartmentalize its materials uh, so that they don't end up in the wrong place or when something's being transported, right? And so vacuoles can be formed, they're all, they're formed all the time. They can be big, they can be small, right, depending on the cell, depending on what the material is. And um, in plant cells, actually, as well as fungal cells, as well as some protists, they can, they can have a pretty big, um, something we call a central vacuole, uh, which can be used to store water, it can be used to store materials, right? But in animal cells, you also get vacuoles, and they're just, you know, they're smaller, they're more dynamic, they're not like one big central vacuole, uh, the same way that you find in, like, plant cells. Um, so, for example, like we saw on the previous slide, uh, when material is taken in by the cell, like this in, in the case of phagocytosis, right, a vacuole is formed, right? It's, an em it's a membrane-enclosed <clears throat> set of material, um, in protists, they sometimes have contractile vacuoles that help pump water out of the cell and help the organism move around. So it's always useful to have that as well if you need to move around. Um, and the central vacuole that's found in plants um, grows as a plant as the cell gets older, uh, and it can store water, it can store organic compounds, it can store ions, whatever the cell might need um, for survival and maintenance. Okay, so those are vacuoles. And that's all I think I wanted to say on that slide. So here's one more diagram of the endomembrane system. And the key takeaway is that this is, you know, the endomembrane system is a fairly complex as well as dynamic um, system or tool that the cell will use to maintain organization, um, to get things out of the cell that need to go out of the cell, to bring things in that need to be brought in, and sorting and packaging materials, right? And so keep in mind that this is one of the reasons why eukaryotic cells are more complex than prokaryotic cells, because of this endomembrane system, because all these membranes that compartmentalize uh, the materials in the cell, it can do much more complex processes because um, chemicals or enzymes or materials can be held in one place without interacting with others, right? And so you get a lot more complexity that way, a lot more 
functionality. And so that's what we see in our eukaryotic cells. So make sure you take a good look at this diagram. It's a great diagram to kind of show the, the progression from the nucleus where the DNA is, right? You might have a, some mRNA that comes out of here. It binds to ribosome. It makes some proteins. The proteins go through the endo, endoplasmic reticulum. Then they fuse into the Golgi body. They're modified there. They pass through, and eventually they pass out of the cell. So it's kind of fun to think about that. Um, that's all I wanted to say here. Uh, let's do a practice question. So a practice question. Describe the structural and functional differences between the rough and smooth ER. So take a moment to um, get an answer down, and then we can compare. So in terms of the structure, the rough ER has ribosomes bound, whereas the smooth ER is just the membrane without ribosomes. Um, but there's still it's still like kind of these flattened membrane sacs. Um, in terms of the function, since the rough ER has the ribosomes, it's really much more closely involved in protein synthesis. Um, as well, well, both of them are involved in phospholipid synthesis or membrane synthesis. Um, except the proteins are made by the rough ER, whereas the lipids um, are mostly made by the smooth ER. The smooth ER also is involved in calcium ion storage, right? Remember we said muscle cells, detox of the cell, right? So alcohol, um, any drugs are uh, processed by the smooth ER to get rid of them, as well as um, lipid and synthesis, Right, so these are all things that the smooth ER does. And I think that's all. And then we have another question. So imagine that there's a protein uh, that uh, is needed for the functioning of the uh, ER. So it's a protein that is used in the ER, um, but before it can go to the be used by the ER, it needs to be modified in the Golgi apparatus. After that, it becomes functional. Prior to that, it is not. Right, so I want you to think about the path of um, that protein through the cell, starting with the mRNA um, that would be the, the mRNA for that specific protein. So take a moment to answer that question. Right, so here's my answer that you can compare to. So the DNA is used to make the mRNA, right, and that mRNA is going to leave the nucleus um, attach to a ribosome. Um, it would probably be a ribosome on the endoplasmic reticulum because uh, the protein needs to be modified by the Golgi body uh, before it can be used, but the bottom line is that it attaches to ribosome, right? The protein um, is made uh, on the, let's say on the ER, um, and then it gets passed to the Golgi body or to the Golgi apparatus. I keep saying Golgi body, but because those two are used, Golgi body or Golgi apparatus, so same thing. Um, so at the Golgi body, it um, is modified, right? Maybe some glycoproteins are taken off, maybe um, something is added to the protein, and so it will go back in the opposite direction, so like against the current of things, right, from the trans, essentially, to the cis side, um, and then it will go back to the endoplasmic reticulum, where it can be used and it's a fully functional um, protein. <laughs> the diagram maybe isn't the most clear, but you could probably go back if you wanted to um, and go to this diagram and you can imagine it here, right? So you have your DNA, right? The mRNA is made, it goes out through a pore, binds to a um, ribosome here, Protein is made, protein is passed to the Golgi body, modified, and then it'll be passed back to uh, the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. So that's kind of the end of the story here for the endo endomembrane system. It's a lot to memorize, uh, but it's really important for cell functionality and uh, for your understanding of biology. So I hope you enjoyed that.